This is the Seastar S50, the portable smart telescope that just made astrophotography easy. Easy. It finds, it tracks, it captures, it stacks, and guess what? The pictures it takes are actually pretty good. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Aren't smart telescopes just expensive toys? It's not real astrophotography. Well, if you've seen some of the images people are posting from the Sea Star straight out of the camera, you may be in for a bit of a shock. The Sea Star lets you take your own astro photos without any previous photography experience. Inside the Sea Star unit is a 50 millimeter telescope a dedicated astronomy camera, a light pollution filter, and a tracking go-to mount. Yes, it's an Altaz mount, but it works. More on this in a minute. With a current price of $499 US, the Seastar is one of the cheapest, fastest, and easiest ways to get an impressive photo of the moon, the sun, and the brightest deep sky objects. Planets are possible, but they're gonna be pretty small at this field of view. I've been waiting to try out the Sea Star for months and a Gina Astro in the US came through and sent me a production unit for testing last week. Better late than never. The little Sea Star weighs about seven pounds and it comes with an impressive little foam carry case to keep it in. This makes it great for travel, which is perfect for people traveling to the total solar eclipse next year. The kit includes a quality carbon fiber tripod base, a charging cable, a solar filter, and of course, a dedicated mobile app. There's no hand controller or anything. You control the telescope wirelessly with your smartphone using a Wi-Fi connection. Once fully charged with the included USB type C cable, it lists a battery life of up to six hours. To control the Seastar S50, you'll have to download the dedicated Seastar app. After allowing your location settings, you will see some handy astronomy weather information, including the current moon phase. You'll also see the primary modes of the Seastar star like stargazing, solar, and lunar astrophotography. This is an exciting screen to see when you first open it up. If you're looking for some ideas of what to capture, you can use the tonight's best menu and even see upcoming celestial events like meteor showers and eclipses below that. Even though the scenery mode seems like something you could do with your phone camera, it's using a telescope to view terrestrial objects. And you have the advantage of ultra steady, precise movements via the app. I didn't expect this feature to be so cool. Inside the Seastar unit is a 50 millimeter triplet apochromatic refractor with a focal length of 250 millimeters and an F ratio of F5. You heard me right, a triplet APO along with everything else. I honestly don't know how the Seastar is this price. Attached to the telescope is a one shot color astronomy camera, the same sensor used in the ZWO ASI 462MC. This is the exact camera used inside of the Seastar S50, the ASI 462MC. Now I've been using this camera for a while now for planetary imaging through my larger telescopes. You can actually see that long vertical style sensor in there, that 1936 by 1096 sensor. So 2.1 megapixels. If you wanna see all the characteristics of this sensor, they're all on the ZWO website. While the entire package is impressive, I think the camera is actually its weakest point. It's highly sensitive and capable of deep images. It's just really small. Don't expect to capture a wide field of view with the Sea Star. You're limited to a very specific window of space just over a degree. It's great for the moon and the sun, not so much for planets. With that being said, the little camera is a workhorse, live stacking its way to a great deep sky image 10 seconds at a time. 10 seconds is the default exposure time for the Sea Star in stargazing mode, and for good reason. Because the Sea Star uses an Altaz base without polar alignment, it's limited to about 10 seconds or you'll start to see field rotation so you just need to roll with it. However, it does a great job of automatically calibrating and stacking your subframes together to create a final master image. So if you're a complete beginner, you can totally skip over that step. For the intermediate user, you might wanna tap into the more advanced settings and stack those individual sub exposures yourself. I haven't done it myself, but it'd be a really cool way to push the limits of the Sea Star. So the Sea Star is tracking and capturing the Witch's Broom, the Western Veil Nebula right now. 
now. And it's using a process called live stacking. It's continuously taking 10 second exposures and stacking them on top of each other to improve the image, to improve the signal to noise ratio. So this is a technique known as EAA or electronically assisted imaging. And it's one way you can just enjoy objects in the night sky. Just look at that live stack image. It's a near real time view that just keeps getting better and better. The listed Wi-Fi range for the Sea Star is about 15 feet. Because it's been so cold out, I tested running the Sea Star from just inside the house, and the connection was stable within this 15 foot distance. Speaking of the cold, I was happy to see that the Sea Star includes an integrated dew heater and that the unit is rated to operate down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Another nice surprise was the built-in light pollution filter. Based on the images I've taken, it looks to be a duo band filter similar to the L Enhance. You can, of course, turn the light pollution filter off to shoot broadband targets like galaxies and star clusters. Speaking of galaxies, check out my first imaging session on Andromeda using the Sea Star. The process is sped up a little bit for the sake of presentation, but it really is this easy. I want to hop over to Andromeda now, and I wanted to take you guys along for the ride. This is the first time I'm pointing the Sea Star at Andromeda. So I'm gonna turn the light pollution filter off because this is a galaxy, a broadband subject, and I'm just gonna go into the tonight's best section and I'll hit M31 and go gazing. So the Sea Star is going to move around and find M31. I'll try to be careful not to shine the uh, light right into the lens as it's trying to plate solve. Moving around. So it's auto centering right now. Let's see what it's, okay. It looks like it's in the right direction and there it is. There's the Andromeda galaxy, the bright core. Okay, we're centered. Now I'll do a quick autofocus, a really great feature of the Sea Star. If it didn't do enough, it has an autofocuser as well. Almost done, it's pretty quick. Now I can also kind of move the framing around slightly if I want to, if you'll notice that um, the core isn't exactly center. I can use the little on-screen joystick to kind of move it around. So if I hit this here and it's on slow, I just want to go this way just ever so slightly. Yep, perfect. Oh, I went a little far, but it's actually a lot better. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to mess with it too much more. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the capture button. So it's going to start taking the first 10 second exposure of the Andromeda galaxy. It probably won't be much to look at at first, but uh, it'll gradually get better and better. So I'm gonna let this run for about five minutes or so, and then we'll check in with the shot. Oh, wow, look at it already. Forget five minutes. I can see one of the uh, spiral arms of dust. Holy moly. If you already have an astrophotography kit with a nice telescope and an EQ mount, you can probably take better pictures than the Sea Star. I mean, come on, your camera alone probably costs twice, if not three times the cost of this entire package. But that's not what the Sea Star is all about. It's about allowing anyone to take pictures of objects in space without knowing what dithering or field rotation means. It's about plunking this thing down on the ground, pressing a few buttons and getting a live view of the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy. The Seastar S50 delivers the best parts of astrophotography in a fun and easy way. The words astrophotography and easy are not often paired together, but I think the Seastar S50 has finally pulled it off. And this means more people thinking about our place in the universe and how incredibly rare our existence is here on Earth. And you know what? That's a lot more important than taking pictures. 